Chapter Four of Three Little Kittens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mike Stanish. Three Little Kittens by Catherine Pyle. Four. The next morning, Aunt Tabby again offered to show Jasbury the mouse hole in the cupboard. Jasbury looked very sulky. He was ashamed to try to beg off again, particularly after what Aunt Tabby had done for him the day before. But it seemed hard to have to give up another morning of play. He followed Aunt Tabby into the kitchen. The cook had gone to market, and the door of the cupboard was ajar. Aunt Tabby pushed it open and led the way into the darkness where the pots and pans were stored. "'Here's the hole, Jasbury,' she told him in a low voice. "'I have a feeling the mouse is out, and if you only keep perfectly quiet, I feel sure it will try to get back into the hole again.' That will be a chance, and I shall be very much disappointed if you do not catch your first mouse this morning. I don't feel as if I could catch anything today, said Jasbury sulkily. Now, Jasbury, don't go about it that way. If you don't catch it, it will be your own fault, and I shall feel very much provoked with you. Then Aunt Tabby went away and left him there. She did not go far, however. She was so anxious to have him get the mouse that she lingered close by where she could hear everything that went on in the cupboard though this the kitten did not know jasbury crouched down in the shadow of the kettle as his aunt bade him and kept perfectly quiet with his eyes fixed on the hole not even a whisker stirred he did wish that he could catch that mouse if only to show aunt tabby what he could do if he chose how pleased and surprised she and his mother would be if he were really to get one Outside the kitchen was very still. The clock tick-tocked, and the kettle simmered on the stove. Suddenly Jasbury heard a little scratching, scraping sound at the back of one of the pots. It was so very little and faint that only a cat's ears could have heard it. Jasbury's eyes grew round, his muscles stiffened, ready for a leap. Suddenly out from behind the pot whined a winged grasshopper it flew so close to jasbury it almost brushed his nose forgetting all about the mouse jasbury made a leap for it he knocked against a tin pan that clattered down with a tremendous din at the same moment a little gray shape flitted out from behind him like a tiny shadow slipped across the floor and disappeared down the mouse hole it was the mouse and jasbury had lost it almost at the same moment jasbury received a sharp box on the ear that almost upset him you bad boy cried his aunt i'm just all out of patience with you even when a mouse runs right by under your nose you can't catch it jasbury began to mew well you didn't have to box my ears anyway i couldn't help it yes you could that's what provokes me so fluffy's not half as quick and active as you and look at the way he catches mice i'm ashamed of you mother bunch's round furry face appeared at the door looking in at them what's the matter has jasbury been doing anything no he hasn't been doing it that's the matter and aunt tabby poured out the whole story while jasbury stood by looking both sullen and ashamed i don't care i couldn't help it he said don't say don't care to me said mother bunch it isn't respectful not to me not to your aunt either the mouse has gone i suppose so there is no use in you staying here you may go out on the kitchen steps but you mustn't play around or go over to see fluffy that is your punishment for being so careless and disrespectful too End of chapter four